That looked like a moment, an opportunity for him to get back in the game. A two versus one, Elise, you said he had the player to perfection. That was everything you could have asked for. Everything went his way. Every shot landed right in the skulls of vitality. He outplays him in every facet of the game. And they're one round away of him closing this one out. A series to be remembered. And don't discount what that man has meant to this as well. Look how calm Adren is right now. You need a rock for a coach. You need someone to hold you together. Zonic is that for Astralis. We know that. We know how good he is. Maybe this is one of the key components to Liquid success. I would certainly suggest it is. That is incredible. How does he hit that shot? 8 HP, it shouldn't be possible. Alex had already found two kills in that round. It looked like he did it. They can't even believe it. They've got such a buffer here. I can't see a World or Liquid give this final up now. This should be it. There's shotguns, there's MP9s. They're throwing everything they possibly can into round number 24. It's MPK with the other shotgun. Down he goes, and four more kills will do it. Twist takes his time to walk up. They don't want to overreact to the first kill, and RPK tries to hold the angle. Excellent shot on the M4. Tough to beat the man with the highest headshot percentage in a big event. And he does it with an M4, which takes one extra bullet in doing it. And then he does one better. He goes out and gets Naf. We saw how good RPK was over both Dust2 and Inferno. And he needs to be everything and more now as the map spreads back out. In fact, the bomb is going to group and they're going to head toward B, having lost the duels already on A. Zaiwu waits with a far smaller weapon than he's used to wielding but a much bigger brain, perhaps, than what Liquid were expecting because he sits in the corner and leaves again. No way. Oh. Not two for two. Not in this side. It's another exact same situation. And this time, he's got his team made up. 12 HP for RPK. No diffuse kit available here. A two versus two. A Liquid have the advantage. They're trying to bring it down to the two versus one. If it's RPK, there's drop. They could be in serious trouble. That should do it. There we go. It's Team Liquid. And that's what it means to them. They've taken it in the fourth map. The favorites coming into the tournament have just unlocked the Intel Grand Slam as ESL won Cologne under their belt and a million dollars bonus. Unreal, the fashion they did it. They never won in season one. They were so close so many times. It got to the point where no one thought they could. They brought in that guy, Stewie. They brought in a Dren and they changed everything. They fell shy at the major but no one can dispute they are the best in the world right now. And don't even look away from Vitality. They will be back. They are a team on the rise. They are undoubtedly in the top three. Yeah, this team's just getting started. They've got a lot of issues with the squad. They've also got a lot of power, a lot of talent and discipline. They are working hard, and this was an epic game. The team that did this last time, I very colorfully told you, was the best of all time. But this took 63 days from Sydney, Dallas, Montpellier, and now here in the Cathedral of Counter-Thrike. The Holy Chalice now belongs to Team Liquid, and so much more. Four from four? Accomplishments are transient, but this legacy is permanent. They have done what no one might ever do again. Intel Grand Slam, Team Liquid! Untouchable! 63 days! It's almost inconceivable. Team Liquid, through raw skill and will, are your ESL 1 Cologne 2019 Champions! In 2018, Liquid lived in the shadow of Astralis. The same nightmare time and time again. But in 2019, they were fed up of that reoccurring nightmare and they've decided to give it to the rest of the Counter-Strike world because this team right here are scary. Terrifying. What a way to do it. Not a single player to highlight above the rest. Everyone pulling their weight and lifting that trophy. We're gonna hear from them now. Your champions are on stage with OJ. They are indeed in the centre of this cathedral in front of 15,000 people. Just watch history being made. You're quite emotional right now. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the greatest achievements. I think the greatest achievement of, uh, you know, North American CS. And um, I just to think that my mom and dad are watching this right now. It really makes me teary.
and I don't know, across my team. These guys are awesome, and I wouldn't want to play with anyone else. North American Counter-Strike, the pendulum has swung that way. The kings are dead, long live the kings. This is the new era. Yeah, I think, I mean, last year we was living in the shadow, and it gave us all this drive, and we knew that we were going to be the best this year, and we're living up to it. We're going to talk about the Intel Grand Slam a little bit later on. We have a whole presentation for that. But right now, at this moment, surrounded by your team, it's been a long journey. It might be 63 days to have won the Grand Slam. But the whole era of this team, the way you've built, the setbacks, it's been a long time coming, this. Yeah, I mean, I think it's something that we've all been waiting for. And uh, when Jake and Adren joined the team, uh, it was the next step that we took. And Stewie has helped us so much. He's really helped us a lot, and he just loves a lot of credit. And uh, Nick's had amazing calling since he's joined, and it's, it's amazing. At what point during that final match did you know it was on? Did you know it was happening, that you were winning here in Cologne? I uh, definitely, I mean, when we saw Vitaly knock down the Shawless, we actually kind of preferred to play as Shawless, just so, like, the story would live up to the same. But I think beating Vitaly was also good since uh, they beat us at Summit, and it's a like, nice revenge. Are you the number one in the world now? We were to begin with. There you go, they were to begin with. They are your champions at ESO 1 Cologne. Once again, put your hands together. Team Liquid! The credit, that was Twists on the mic. He's pointing all the credit towards Stewie, the newest addition alongside their coach, Adren. And they have. They've broken all curses, all misnomers around Liquid and expectations. Now the trophy is the expectation. Incredible turnaround. These guys have been in the final of every tournament except the major this year. It's the fifth title they've taken out of eight finals they've played in. What defines 2018? What, what, what metal would you say? It's silver, right? Yeah. This is the golden age of Team Liquid. They've literally won the gold bars. They've done it. They really have. Gold bars, a million dollars straight to the players, your season two Intel Grand Slam champions. Team Liquid, they do it with a smile on their face and a fire in their belly. Did you see Stewie jump on top of the desk? I've never seen a man jump so high so quick. You heard Twist there saying, you know, it's probably the best North American Counter-Strike achievement sure. of all time. That is without a doubt. There's not even a question about it. You go back through all the versions of CS, you could look through the history books and we've got the man who writes them here. Nobody from North America has ever looked this good. No, because think about it, right? Okay, you had the Cloud9 that won the major. It was the one big tournament they won, though. Then you had the Team Liquid last year, but always second place. You go back in time, was it three years here when they made the final with Simple? They were on the back of Simple from Ukraine. This championship, this Intel Grand Slam, was made in North America. Absolutely. Bloody lootly it was. Naf was given the honor of picking up that trophy. He contributed. You can see the coach Andrin there as well. It's a team effort. They've been saying it time and time again. It's about the team. They've been making it so focused on us as a unit, as a as a five fingers on a hand. Listen to some of the stats here. So Naf ends with plus 13. Twists ends plus 32. Elige ends plus 21. Nitro ends plus 20. The only player who's negative on the plus minus is Stewie2K, the entry fragger, and he's only minus five over a four map series against one of the best teams in the world. Yeah, and if you look at his impact, if you look at some of the clutches he won, if you look at the dirty work he does for the team, and then you add that with the praise that Twist just gave him, yeah. it doesn't matter that the scoreboard shows oh, he went no. negative. It's all positive right there for Liquid and on a map where it looked like they were getting bullied in that first half. They're able to turn it around and take the second half with ease. I know the mound everyone's going to remember is that 1v2 with Elyse, though. Yes. The way he played that out, that just shows his development as a player. Like, he wasn't shook in that moment. He yeah. wasn't afraid. He was setting them up. He was taking the angles he wanted. And at the end, you just knew he was going to get that kill. His adjustments are just robotic. There is a new mechanical skill, a new level. I feel like that it's just, it's been whispered about. We've seen glimmers of it, but it's starting to be replicated more and more. People are getting better. This game is 20 years old and people keep getting better. Yeah, I, I, look, Counter-Strike now is about how you understand every single moment and every single little detail and how well your teammates understand the same way you do, yes. right? It's about being on the same page. It's about the same wavelength. It's about being able to take that and run with that and Liquid are doing that better than everybody in the world. Now, sure, maybe their strats might lack a little bit of finesse, but they have the ability to brawl and turn every single moment into a round for Team Liquid. Here's the difference. When I saw the Astralis team, I couldn't even tell other teams copy that because like, they had every perfect player for that role and he would do his job in that role. This team is crazy. It's what FaZe wished they were. They have players who can do each other's role 
in the middle of a round, in the middle of a map. They can just swap it up and suddenly someone else is the entry fagger. Suddenly someone else is the carry of the game. It's time for the Intel Grand Slam presentation ceremony. We're going to head over to OG. So then it is time to talk about the Intel Grand Slam. We have our new champions of season two. We know what happens here. There is a dollar prize to go with it. One million dollars and the gold bars as well. And we've seen it happen once before. Astralis did it. It took them, as we've heard, 232 days. Four wins out of seven events. But hey, who wants to do it over seven events when you can do it over four? Sorry. You can do it over four events. You managed to do this Grand Slam in four events. Uh, yeah, ever since I joined this team, I just want to break records. I want to make history. I want to leave a footprint in Counter-Strike. And, you know, we did it here. We made it four out of four. We're, we're not stopping here. We're looking to make more history. We're going to try to be the best team in the world for the longest time. Well, let us put a big underscore under that because I need to say that Team Liquid are now our Intel Grand Slam champions from Season 2. Let's present them with the gold bars. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me hear it again for Team Liquid. Presenting the gold bars are Robert Martin, the Consumer Marketing Manager of Intel, and Ulrich Schultz, the Senior Vice President of Product at ESL. The gold bars will come in now. Here they are. Good luck trying to get these back through customs. I'm sure we'll send them for you if we need to. As they're handed over, Stewie, the rise of this team, we heard before from NAF, he was saying that it, it really clicked when you were part of it. Um, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, there's a video that Thorin was talking about, and I think he put it together pretty well. Um, there's a bunch of misfits in this team, and somehow we make it work. And when I joined, I can tell they're hungry to win, and we all share one goal. How'd you feel about the goal bar? Um, hopefully many more to come. <laughs> um, now I want to take you back to that first event in Sydney. That was the first one, IEM Sydney. Um, how was that event for you, winning it, being down under? That was the first step on the road to that gold bar. I think that was our first stepping stone as a team. Um, we beat Astralis at Abba Power before, but that win really made it feel that we beat the mental barrier. Um, we came through this uh, second place mentality that, um, since I joined, and they knew what it took to be a champion team after that one. Stu, it's been great watching you play. Let me get a little word over here. You're now hold holding your gold bar. Sorry. Um, you've had many ups and downs in this team. When you weren't winning, how did you keep the team together? How did you know that you were going to get to this point? Well, we have a lot of uh, infrastructure from uh, Liquid that they've given us, like our sports psychologists, our management, like our manager, our CEOs. Like, they've all just given us so much to be able to just keep getting to the next level. Like, Nick and I, we've been through a lot on this team, and we've grown a lot as people and as players, and uh, I'd like to thank all of our like, staff and Liquid for that. What was your lowest point? Lowest point? Just all of 2015 and 2016, probably lowest. Why? Why was it so low? And does that low make this high so much sweeter? Well, we were just a lot more inexperienced back then, like just as people and players, like we just didn't really know too much of what we were doing. And just over the years, putting in a ton of work into the game and into ourselves makes this win just amazing. Well, there you go, your gold bar. Where are you going to put that in the house? I'm just going to put it right on like the, I don't know, I'm going to make, I have to make something for it. I need to make something for this gold bar. I've been waiting for this for like two years. <laughs> it is an amazing trophy, isn't it? Uh, let me come this way and just to ask a little question here about how you kept going during those lean times, how you kept the team motivated. Oh man, I'm not really the one that motivates them. Probably, well, let's talk to him then. How do you keep the team motivated? I mean, you just got to keep them focused really, right? That's it. Is that it? Come on, what words of wisdom? There'll be other, there'll be other, there'll be other coaches watching this right now. How have you kept the motive? How did you keep them on the track to win this trophy? I mean, they motivate themselves, right? I'm just there to kind of push them and support them which any way I can. Come on, there's more to it than that. No, man, we just got, you just got to focus and that's it, man. Focus and win, focus and win. So then, um, talk me through that next win. It was DreamHack Masters. It was a big win for you. It was the second stop on the journey to this gold bar. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, Dallas was a huge event for us, of course. It was just another step to uh, the Grand Slam and result for here. So, yeah, it was, I don't know. It was amazing. We played great at that event as well. Just, I don't know. We're just playing great. We're the number team in the number one team in the world for a reason. Uh, and then Montpellier, two weeks ago, just two weeks ago, was the third stop. That was a big win. Did you know at that point that this moment was coming? No, I had no idea. Honestly, this is like a dream come true. Like. When I first heard the Intel Grand Slam, I didn't think it was possible for us, but we made the roster changes and uh, the dreams became reality, and it's, it's amazing. 
where you're holding that dream in your hands right now. Um, I think what I want to do with you, Stewie, um, if we can see one of the um, one of the screens, we're going to play you through that last map. I want you to talk me through that last map of how it worked, just the emotions that were going through your mind. I think we'll be able to see it in just a second because on that last map, that's where you sealed all this. You can see it right now. Talk me through this. What were the emotions like within the team? Um, it was a tough game, honestly. We started off winning pistol, and I think we won, won only two out of ten pistols in the series. And it was a tough one. Uh, they started playing really well, rushing, uh, playing together fast in trades, and they were doing well. And then, you know, we had this pause saying we don't play to survive, you know, we play to fight. And if we fight, we die, that's fine. We want to die that way. And that's how our style is. We play aggressive, we get in their face. And honestly, Alige and Twist are coming up on a lot of big rounds for us, and they're the closers of our team. So everyone's doing their great roles and, you know, kind of showed on this map here. I'm not sure who said it, but somebody did say that this Team Liquid has gone from a team that couldn't close out, that had this curse around them, to being so confident that halfway through the final map, it was a done deal. Sorry, I lost you. So, oh, man. Oh, what I was saying, you've changed around the mentality to become a team that is so confident that halfway through the final map, it seemed like it was a done deal. Yeah, the task is actually a lot taller than people think it is. It's not as easy as it looks uh, joining a new team like this, but... You know, I think their one biggest flaw was having this second place mentality and couldn't get through that. And, you know, they needed someone to show them. They needed someone to help them. And I'm glad I could have been a part of this team and a part of a great journey. How are you going to spend your share of the million dollars? Spend it like a rock star? Uh, I'm going to spend it like a rock star tonight, that's for sure. 100 percent we'll put your hands together one more time they are the season two intel grand slam champions they take home the trophy for me as l1 as cologne please put your hands together one more time team liquid It's an incredible achievement. It really is North America firmly on the Counter-Strike map at the tippy top of it. And this, of course, did involve a whole lot of fantastic Counter-Strike as well. What were the very best plays? That's one of the questions I'm sure you're wondering. And in fact, Mountain Dew app Game Fuel Power Plays acts as a way for us to understand which were the best plays. Let us know what your highlight is. Do communicate over on Twitter. It's nice and easy at ESLCS with that hashtag on screen. We're going to have a look at the options. The Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel Power Plays. So there was twists, of course. It feels like oh so long ago on Overpass. My goodness, we did get to see this Deagle. The fact that he had the audacity to actually get that final frag with the D with the AK on his back, still using the sidearm. Zaiwu, of course, his heroics. He did manage to have his first grand final, his first best of five. He did manage to sh remind us and show us what he is going to be capable of in the future. Yeah, look, he still finished this series with an amazing rating. It was hugely impactful. And I think considering this is his first final of this caliber, if we can see that delivered time and time again, uh, the world is going to be very excited by what this Zywoo character has to offer. Alex too, I mean, admittedly, yes, there was this kind of somewhat of a dip, but Vitality, if you reflect on them, for the time they've had together, Duncan, they can be nothing but satisfied and excited for the future. No, I mean, obviously, they, they, they're kind of feeling what we felt when it was Team Liquid who was always second yeah. in the Like, sometimes if the team you're facing is the greatest team of the era, you're going to lose these finals. Like, if this was a different team, listen, if Na'Vi had maybe pulled it out yesterday, I think Vitality could have won this tournament, like I said in my tweet before. So, very, very positive signs for them. Yeah. You look at Zewu, you look at the others. If you're an in-game leader and you're first ever best of five, you're asking a lot to ask them to beat the best team in the world. We just have to remember as well, MBK and Apex were on the bench of G2 until like yes. October last year. And right then they brought this team together. They had RPK, they had Happy, they obviously had Zaiwu. But then they made the change with Alex towards the end of the year. That was late yeah. December and already, right? We're talking within the span of, I think it was 192 days or something along those lines. They've already made it to the grand final of one of the, if not the most iconic Counter-Strike tournaments in the entire calendar. Yeah, I mean, that says something. And also with a format that almost all players, I say almost all, almost all players praised for being the one they consider most competitive. It's perfect. It's a microcosm of itself. We now know that Liquid are the world's best. They knew it already, and uh, they just had to show it for the rest of the world. Now, all nodding dogs, we can accept that Team Liquid really are the North American rulers of Counter-Strike. When people say, there'll well, probably be some people out there, they go, but would they have won those first stops if uh, Stralis was there, though? Mm. I don't know if you were watching ESL Pro League or this tournament, but Astralis was at these tournaments and I didn't see them stopping Team Liquid. So that's a question the Astralis guys can ask themselves in the middle of the night, waking up from a cold fever. Team Liquid don't have to, they won these championships. And you know what's important there? The, the win that they had at the start of the year in the I by Power Masters, 
Stewie just said that was the confidence. That was all the confidence that they needed, right? Yeah. So that one loss at the start of the year and then Astralis going missing for a decent period of time was more than enough to give Liquid the confidence and allow them to elevate their play to uh, this level, which is amazing. Yeah, and I mean, and when we when you kind of uh, reflect upon Liquid's hardships, I do, it's, it makes those interviews where they talk about confidence and mentality and coaching, it, it's so clear that Team Liquid have been in the situation, the, the opposite side of this situation so many times to see it flip over. I mean, it does just feel like it's kind of that that revenge, that that juicy, juicy storyline that we're going to keep pulling on as the year progresses. If they could win a second Intel Grand Slam this year, <laughs> assuming we have a season three. But if that goes on down, we have Chicago coming up, we have New York, we've yeah. just got the next Pro League season, and I'm pretty sure there's one more Intel Grand Slam event that's got the DreamHack Masters coming yeah. up as well. So there's a chance that Liquid could get two within a year. If they continue like this, I don't see why not. And remember, there is no Astralis in Chicago. So if they win that, that first of all, it doesn't count for the same thing, but that would be five of these events in a row. Yeah. No one's ever done anything close to that. Yeah, dominance starts certainly from Team Liquid. We'll keep you able to keep track of that as the events continue. But first, we have to find out the results. You guys have been casting your votes, and it does look like Twist's Deagle on overpass. It was an gorgeous clutch with AK and Deagle, and I think Jacob's got it up on the Telestrator. It was indeed a very beautiful clutch by the man himself, Twist. To me, he was my MVP in this final, a guy that gets a lot of recognition, but does he really get enough? This one right here with the Deagle, that's just amazing. In a very close game, at a very important time, he pulls out the Deagle, he pulls out the clutch, and makes sure that Liquid won that first map and did it all the way on overpass. Twist was, a set, my personal MVP of this one, and this Deagle clip is a great showcase of why. It certainly was. Fantastic work from Twist. But the point that was raised, actually, and it was Duncan, you brought up all those stats, so close from all of them, it's so hard for us to start talking about stars because I think sure. they might all be stars. They really are. It's got a, a team full of superstars. I remember the ESL 1 New York final, obviously the one where famously Team Liquid got to play someone other than Astralis, and everyone thought, right, it's the easy one. It's the layup. It's the con coronation. Right? They sure. didn't win. They lost. Twist was going mental in that series. He was unbelievable. Problem was, NAF wasn't that good. Some other people were hit and miss, you know. This team is a totally different squad. Like we said, the roles don't even almost make sense to attach to people in the same way because people just frag out whatever position they're in. Yeah, I remember making a comment at one of these events that Liquid could be the first team to ever play spawn-based Counter-Strike, right? Sure. Because they have five individuals who are all so versatile, who can all orb, who can all... They, they want to learn, they want to absorb all this knowledge to do every single role, right? And that makes them really scary for the future if they continue to adapt in that fashion. If you could play a map like Dust2 on the CT side where every individual could merely play based off spawns, you can just stop every single rush. You take that away from people. Yeah, I mean, that was your dream, I think, Chad, back in yeah. the day, right? It just didn't quite have the Team Liquid caliber. Uh, no one does. No one does. Yeah, I think they're uh, a class of their own right now. I and also, we might be going into a more exciting era of Counter-Strike than what we saw in 2018, at least in terms of the finals, because I think we have so many more competitive teams who have followed this Astralis blueprint, and now they're able to elevate their decision-making and the way that they get the team together and the bits and pieces to be looking as good as what a Liquid can be. And I think... That is it. ESL One Cologne. Any closing thoughts on this event? It has been, a, a, you know, it's a it's a bookmark in Counter Strike calendar every single year. It is just this prodigious and prestigious, gorgeous, fifteen thousand stacked arena Counter Strike event. But we got to do it again, Duncan. What are your, what's your what's your kind of reflections on what has been ESL One Cologne 2019? I mean. This is not officially a major, but I think if you listed everything you love about a major, I'd even add in, I think there's a better format than a major. We had like, it was something crazy, like what, 13 of the, the top 13 of the top 16 yeah. in yep. the entire world. And obviously we have some slots we give to Asian teams, etc. So I don't think you could ask for a better tournament. And whether it was officially a major or not, it felt like the world championship to me. So great moment to crown, obviously the number one team in the world anyway. Look, I just hope we get to do it again next year. Fingers crossed. Absolutely. I think we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching, whether it's been at home or here in the arena. In fact, some still sticking around right to the end. So my final applause to you. And thank you so much for joining us. ESL One Cologne 2019 concludes. Team Liquid, your champions. Chicago around the corner. Counter-Strike keeps coming. But for now, we take a break. And it's a long one.